Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, our USA Nordic webinar. We have a, uh, I'm Karen Gert Nielsen, I'm the CEO of Atlantic Link and the uh, uh, Managing Director for Discover America. Um, I'm happy to have this uh, to host this webinar on behalf of, behalf of Discover America today. And we are overwhelmed by the participants. We have both a lot of our partners from the US. I know there was a little bit of confusion because of the summer uh, change of time last night in US, and we're still uh, on our regular time over here in Europe, at least for the next two weeks. Um, but the um, participation and uh, the amount of people that's in the room now, I welcome you all very much so just shows the um, the huge interest there is for travel between US and the Nordics. But before we dive into the program, I have a few housekeeping notes. And one is that if I can kindly please ask you all to mute and remove your videos would be great, be highly appreciated. Um, we expect the program to run for 50 minutes, uh, followed by Q and A's. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, write them in the chat room and we will do our best to answer all the questions at the end of the session. The session is recorded um, and a link will be sent out to everyone tomorrow together with a survey, which we hope you'll respond to so we can be even better and improve our webinar sessions. I also want to thank our all our speakers for joining us today and give us some of their insightful updates from their perspective. I'm especially honored um, to have the US Embassy in the Kingdom of Denmark, Pastor Affair, Mr. Stuart Dwyer with us. From Brand USA, we have Jackie Ennis. We have US Travel Association represented with Michael Martin, who will talk about IPW. And then we have our um, <coughs> largest airport in Western Denmark, uh, Bilund Airport by Jesper Klausholm. So, with that said, if Klaus can share the presentation. Yeah, this is my all time favorite slide. I'm going to give you a little insight of the Nordics. Many of you that's here in the Nordics, of course, knows this, but for our American friends. So, when we say the Nordic, we talk about Scandinavia, Finland, Iceland, Faroe Island, Greenland, and the Baltics. Um, we're still the happiest people in the world, and we are the leading region when it comes to travel internationally. Um, when you look at this slide, it tells you why the Nordic region is so important. Just look at our vacation time, just look at our maternity leave, which is two years, and we just need to so and just look at um, our average household income of almost hundred thousand dollars. We are, of course, going to share this uh, presentation in the recorded version we are sending to you as well. So the next slides is just a quick update on the COVID uh, situation over here as we're covering um, different countries. Um, it has been tackled differently. Sweden has remained the most open during the pandemic, um, whereas the other Nordic countries have been more closed. We are all expecting to be fully vaccinated by end of summer this year. But again, that varies from country to country. We are also working on the vaccine passports that are being developed in collaboration with the European community. So this is my favorite slide. And it's to no surprise, 2020 was not looking good when it come, comes to international arrivals into the US. Um, but if we look at this, uh, January to December 2019, where it was 1.3 million, 2018, we actually reached 1.5 million combined. So when you look at it, it pretty much uh, for 2020 follows the, our neighboring countries uh, here in Europe. Um, the good news is that we are actually still number two, I don't know, still number two when it comes to travel, uh, total travel of the or travel of the total population. But we are also the fourth largest re region in Europe, counting in United uh, UK as well. So right after France, you'll see with 218,000, which is quite a lot out of a population of 32 million during a pandemic time. 
So we will keep you updated with these speakers in our monthly newsletters and hope that um, we will see it growth. We definitely know there's a pent up demand for travel um, and that grows also every week. So with that said, if we, we have just received the January figures and in all fairness, I think we should not be shy of showing this because it also is a very broad outlook for the entire Europe. So we follow pretty well there as well. Um, but still, there's people traveling, which is good, and there's definitely a high, high interest of coming to the US. Um, I want to go over a few of our events here in the Nordics, our annual USA travel show, which we have set for this November 1st, 2021. Um, depending, obviously, uh, on the situation over here, we already have 30 companies signed up as exhibitors. We are having a goal of 60, depending again how many can we be together and the regulations at that time. Of course, we will fully refund you, and this is more speak to the Americans uh, or American partners, uh, is that we will, of course, refund if cancelled. We expect 200 travel agents from the Nordics, 50 media. We are running press conferences in the morning and we are doing one on one meetings in the afternoon. Um, so if you are interested in this particular show that covers all the Nordic countries, then please contact me. Another event we are hosting together with Tivoli Garden and the US Embassy is the Independence Day weekend in Tivoli Garden in Copenhagen. It's a two day event. Um, there will be a marketplace for travel suppliers, tour operators, destinations, DMOs, CVBs, on Saturday, and uh, we actually have cut a very nice cost for that for $300, including the entrance fee at the Tivoli Garden. So if you are in the neighborhood um, and like to participate, just send me an email. Um, next one. Then just a few words about our services. Um, we offer free membership of Discover America in 2021. Many of you know that I'm taking advantage of it. Just send me an email, you'll be on the list and you'll receive our newsletters. We do newsletters also for individual DMOs, uh, states or destinations, uh, which goes up to in the Nordic to 7,000, 18, 3,000 media contacts. That uh, several destinations are already ready to take advantage of that. And we also host webinars. So this is just a quick overlook of what, what you actually, uh, what what we can do for you over here in the Nordics if you're not present by yourself. So, um, now I'm moving on to the next speaker and I'm very honored to introduce you to the US Embassy and Consulate in the Kingdom of Denmark, Mr. Stuart Dreyer, Charles de Affair. I want to say um, to you, Mr. Dreyer, that the US Embassy is a very high valued partner of ours, and the team at the Department of Commerce is working tirelessly to keep USA as the number one international travel destination over here. We can't thank you enough. So with that, Stuart, it's all yours. Great. Thanks a lot, Karen. Really appreciate the invitation to be with you today. And thanks to you. Thanks to uh, Brand USA, the US Travel Association. Uh, and thanks to all the great partners from this region who are on today. It's, uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, look, I recognize this was a very difficult year. I, I grew up in the state of Maine, for those who don't know it, the northeast corner of the U.S. It's very much uh, dependent uh, in part on, on tourism. Uh, my father was in a business that was directly related to tourism. And I know when these exogenous shocks hit, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, I'm dating myself, but I recall the uh, oil crises and the impact that had. Of course, that was nothing compared to the shock that we had with the pandemic. Uh, and the numbers bear that out. I mean, almost four in 10 of all U.S. jobs lost since uh, February of last year were in the travel and tourism industry, which is something like three times greater than the next sector. Uh, and if we look at the unemployment rate in travel and tourism, it's almost three times the overall U.S. rate. So uh, obviously a difficult time. Uh, I am optimistic, though. I do think that we can see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm optimistic because I think we've got a tremendous brand, uh, and I'm reminded of that almost every night now. Uh, you know, one of the great things about being in the Foreign Service is you're able to expose your family to cultures all around the world. Um, the challenge is reminding them that they are Americans, and I have an 11-year-old son who I force every night to read a book about the United States, and we have a different state each night. 
Uh, and uh, it serves me as a great reminder of, you know, we've got tremendous natural wonders. We have the dynamic cities to explore and all of the great sites, uh, but also a lot of places off the beaten path. So uh, as we transition back into a safer environment and once that travel uh, is opened up, we really look forward to wel welcoming guests back. Uh, I addressed this group last year, uh, and some of you may recall at the Hotel Scandinavia, uh, just on the eve of what turned out to be a very challenging year. Uh, and at that time, we were citing some of those positive numbers that we just heard, you know, 1.4 million people from the Nordic Baltic areas visiting 350,000 Danes alone. Uh, and the U.S. Uh, has been the favored long haul destina destination for Denmark. Uh, and the Nordic countries combined fourth largest inbound European market for the United States and second in terms of travelers per capita. Uh, so this is a hugely important industry for us. This is a hugely important region for us. Uh, and you know, if you look at just domestically in the United States prior to the pandemic, travel supported one in 10 American jobs and was our nation's uh, second largest overall export. So. Uh, with those numbers in mind, you really can't underestimate the significance of this industry and how it, it, its successful recovery will be critical uh, for, for all of us. Um, with the vaccine rollout, uh, again, I am optimistic and confident that we're going to reach a point where we can begin to travel again. Um, this is a challenging time because I think as we raise expectations and, and we can see that light at the end of the tunnel, it becomes increasingly difficult to manage those expectations. And I think we've seen that this administration has absolutely prioritized getting the situation under hand, uh, getting, getting the vaccines out, uh, and making sure we're in a safe environment before we start ramping up uh, rapidly with travel. And I know this is something that's being discussed on a, on a daily basis, how we do this in a safe way. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, your, your partners, um, both in Washington and here, are in, are, are in communication uh, with our respective governments on this issue. Um, so again, uh, thank you for inviting me today. Uh, I very much look forward to being in person in November uh, at the event. Um, and uh, I want to thank also the Nordic Airlines for their commitment um, to keeping our countries connected during this challenging time. Uh, so with that, I look forward to, to today. And Karen, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Dwyer for your very nice speech to all of us. And um, we are so looking forward to welcome you at the, um, the Scandinavian USA Travel Show November 1st. So from here, we'll move over to the counselor section with Christina Rabassa and Dina Gates. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Um, my name is Christina Rabasa. I am the consul here at the American Embassy in uh, Copenhagen. And next to me, but off screen, so you can't see her, but is my colleague Dina Grades, who is a senior visa specialist here in the embassy and um, knows everything. Um, so I've been in Denmark since 2018. And um, I have a three-year assignment that will be uh, coming to a conclusion this summer. I'll be here through late July, just for everyone's awareness. Um, I'm here today just to talk to you a little bit about the current state of play in terms of travel restrictions to the United States, maybe give a little bit of history of how they came into place and um, tell you what I know um, about things going forward. But mostly I'm interested, I know you guys are all well aware really of the travel restrictions in place right now. So I'm really interested in hearing what your questions are and we'll do my best to answer them. So I think most, if not all of you um, know that it was just over one year ago, almost exactly back on March 12th of last year when the travel restrictions from the Schengen area to the United States were um, put into effect right around the same time within just 48 hours i think of, of denmark also closing its borders um so then fast forward now to this year in 2021 and the most recent um uh most recent action on travel restrictions took place on january 25th when president biden issued um a new presidential proclamation extending those travel restrictions from back in march 2020 um, in addition, South Africa was added to this new proclamation. Um, there always have been and continue to be some exceptions to the proclamation. 
including certain family members of American citizens and some business travelers. Um, I know, unfortunately, for, for most of you, um, it hasn't, those exceptions haven't helped you as much because it hasn't applied to travelers going for tourism related reasons. Then to compound everything, on January 12th of this year, we know that the CDC issued an order requiring all air passengers age two and older uh, to present either a negative COVID test taken within 72 hours or proof of recently recovered from COVID in order to board an international flight bound for the United States. And there was some confusion at first that some folks, some travelers thought that the CDC order meant that the Schengen area travel restrictions were no longer in place, um, but that was not the case. They are both in place, both the CDC order as well as the proclamation um, temporarily pausing travel from the Schengen area. So I know what the million dollar question is, is, is when will these travel restrictions be, be lifted? Um, as my colleague Stuart mentioned previously, we are we are just as anxious as all of you to have the world go back to normal and to see travel resume in full as soon as possible. Um, the proclamations um, for the geographic areas never had any specific end dates attached to them. They were always left open and stating that they would be lifted um, as soon as the president decided that it was safe to do so and to resume international travel in full. Um, so I don't have a date. There never was one, and I don't know exactly when that date will be. But as Stuart said, I, I am cautiously optimistic with the vaccine rollouts happening in the United States at a pretty good pace and increasing. And with the vaccine vaccination rollouts hopefully happening here in Denmark and the rest of the EU, um, they've already made great progress. And I looks like that's going to continue. I am also cautiously optimistic that things will go back to normal sooner rather than later. I think I feel confident that we're on the the other side, I think. Um, so the best place to go for information if you haven't already is to go to the embassy website, um, dk.usembassy.gov, the White House website, the State Department website, um, all of those websites will have information with current information about travel restrictions um, as they are. And we will certainly update our website and post social media messaging the moment there are any changes to it. If it's eased at all or if it's lifted, we will make sure that we are communicating that as quickly as possible. Um, the embassy really, we remain fully committed to facilitating legitimate travel to the United States. And we are open for some limited visa processing for humanitarian related visas and some business um, related visas. Uh, so for instance, visas for crew members, um, visas for other certain uh, business travelers, we are uh, adjudicating those in limited numbers. Um, and with that, I will pause there because again, I'm more interested in hearing your questions and you're welcome to chat those into, put those into the chat box. I'll try to answer them or at the Q&A part, I will be here and happy to answer questions as you have them. So thank you again for letting me join you guys today. Uh, really appreciate you guys. You are force multipliers and getting the accurate information out there to the traveling public. There's a lot of rumors. So we really appreciate your help with that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina, for this very nice update on where we are. Uh, I want now to switch it over and a special welcome to Jackie Ennis, the Vice President of Global Markets at the Brand USA. And Jackie, I know you're super busy because you're about to open Global Marketplace in an hour. So yes. uh, welcome to and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Karen. It's really a pleasure to be with you all this afternoon. Um, I'm very pleased to be here and it's, it's certainly not lost on me too that Chris Thompson actually spoke at last year's USA Travel Show, um, which I think was one of the last in-person industry events to take place in 2020. Um, at the time, Chris was traveling um, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of Brand USA and its recent reauthorization in late 2019. Um, visitation from the Nordic region had seen certainly some small challenges in 2019 arrivals, um, but little did that prepare us for the challenges ahead in 2020, um, certainly for both Brand USA and the collective travel and tourism industry, it has been a devastating year. 
But despite the year that we've had, um, I am happy to be here when we can hopefully see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I certainly echo Christina's comments that we're, we're almost getting there with the increased vaccination and the decreasing COVID cases um, throughout the US and, the, and our, our markets. Um, as Karen has outlined, I'm also here in recognition of the tremendous um, potential of the Nordic region. Um, we often speak collectively that this region sees 4% of the population travel to the USA each year. There is a strong appetite to experience the US, both visiting the iconic and well-known destinations, but also a keen repeat traveler who will visit for more of the off the beaten track and the hidden gems that the US has to offer. Okay, so for today, moving on to our agenda, um, I'm going to just touch base on the indicators that Brand USA has put together to determine the resumption of travel. I will also um, touch on our newly launched COVID dashboard, which is a data specific tool that structures those indicators for travel marketers um, to use to help inform their strategies about market reentry. And then finally, the Brand USA Global Marketplace. Um, which is a virtual online platform developed to connect the US travel industry with international buyers and the travel trade community worldwide, while we are not able to meet in person. Okay, so Karen has asked me today to address what Brand USA is doing regarding the forecast of international travel to the US. This is the $6 million question that we are all grappling with. Um, as we speak of vaccinations and decreased COVID cases, I also recognize that some of the travel restrictions that we're seeing over the last couple of weeks may seem tighter than ever. Um, as recently as last week, I actually was traveling from the UK to Ireland and back to the US, and I required testing and quarantine in all three countries. Uh, recovery did not seem that close or travel did not seem that easy. Um, and this is our collective challenge. We know that traveler confidence must recover for international travel to return at a large scale. Ultimately, this will require the virus to be under control, both in the US and in the home countries. Moving on to that gating criteria, okay? As I've mentioned, Brand USA has put together key indicators to determine the resumption of travel. We are working very closely with our federal partners and US travel to monitor the optimum timing for recovery. We intend to align our re-entry efforts on a rolling basis as the opportunities in individual markets evolve. The gating criteria that will impact this decision will include both source market and home market conditions. For the source market, air service obviously is a critical component to normalization. We have seen massive reductions in air connectivity between our mar inbound markets and the United States. Seeing the planned increases in seat capacity will certainly influence, it, influence our decision to return to market. Also consumer sentiment the increase in intent to visit the United States is critical. Um, since March of 2020, Brand USA has conducted in-market research reviewing the specific consumer sentiment for travel to the US, and we are continuing to monitor that. Obviously, these months are, are much more critical, and we're seeing some very positive indicators. And clearly, travel restrictions to enter the US have to be lifted. Um, but we also do not want onerous requirements when passengers return to their home countries. There are also consumer behavioral indicators. Um, we are monitoring increases in search and product queries for the US, and these will be taken into consideration also. The home market conditions include the COVID-19 levels. We need to see a sustained or low maintenance of low volume case levels of cases throughout the United States. 
And we also have to be clear that our destinations are willing and ready to accept international inbound visitors. These same destinations and attractions also have to express an interest in beginning to market to those international visitors. OK. Um, so in establishing the gating criteria to help us and our partners determine the timing for effective recovery marketing activity, Brand USA has formalized this data with the launch of its COVID-19 dashboard at the end of January. This will provide a set of indicators on related conditions. The dashboard summarizes how individual markets are performing in relation to recovery targets, which have been designed to help determine recovery is sufficient for effective marketing strategy. Once a market has sustained three months of positive growth across these key areas, we will consider whether the time is right to resume market spending. As mentioned, the dashboard includes for each market the current COVID cases, scheduled airline capacity, Google search trends, and consumer travel intent. It is our intent to work with the global travel trade to help prepare travelers with information that they need to understand the US guidelines, rules, and regulations to ensure that their visit is as safe as possible. Health-related safety measures do vary across the country and are often determined by local and state officials. Our consumer site, visittheusa.com, links to each state's specific set of guidelines and rules. For the travel trade guests in our audience today, please feel free to use this as a resource for your travel planning in the coming months. Okay. And then moving on to recovery. Um, since the lockdowns were initiated last March, Brand USA has focused on providing guidance, information, and insight. We are also focused on keeping the lights on in our core markets. And over the course of the last year, we have trained over 70,000 agents via webinars and e-trainings. In the first quarter of our new fiscal year, starting in October 1, we were training on average 900 agents per week. We have seen active engagement with our online travel agent training program, which has grown 72% from just over 23,000 users to nearly 40,000 users throughout our 11 markets. OK, so in the capacity of keeping the USA top of mind and maintaining the global travel trade community, Brand USA has launched at the end of October last year a virtual platform that connects Brand USA's domestic partners with international audiences to virtually explore and connect directly with US destinations, attractions, and businesses. Resembling a trade show floor, this platform can be accessed 24-7. It has evergreen and refreshed content, virtual rooms that can be accessed from a lobby, which include a USA partner pavilion, a buyer pavilion directory, main stage for programming, and on-demand enrichment and entertainment. Okay, the next um, slide will show you what this uh, global marketplace pavilion looks like. Every US partner will have an individual pod with bespoke assets. The pods are organized geographically by state or business sector. Events on the global marketplace have included Travel Week Europe 2020, which actually um, was the first event um, that took place at the end of October last year. Um, but also what we have done in the interim is have several educational forums called our Focus on Events. Events where Brand USA provides the lightest insights and updates on the travel and trade media landscape in the key markets for US partners. It is our intent to bring our US partners closer to the market and understand the dynamics of this volatile landscape. As budgets are tighter, tighter and spending is restrained, it is all the more important to understand these landscapes to, under, to make informed business decisions as we look to rebuild inbound international tourism into the United States. We are hoping to have a focus on the Nordics before the end of the year. And this week, as, as Karen has mentioned, we are facilitating over 2000 business meetings between US suppliers and over 150 tour operators from the UK, Europe, Canada and Mexico. And that includes nine 
key operators from the Nordic region, um, for which I'm very grateful for your participation. OK. Um, and finally, just a sense of what Brand USA is doing to inspire the consumer to continue to travel dream about the United States. Go USA TV is a travel entertainment streaming platform. Um, this um, platform launched at the in February of 2018, and it is an extension of Brand USA's video storytelling strategy to immerse audiences in travel entertainment about the USA. On this travel, on the on this channel, you are able to view diverse programming from across America, as it talks about the diversity of its people and its landscapes from Trail and Trailblazers, which dis, um, views the great outdoors of the United States, to California pop culture, to Los Americanos, which is about the Hispanic and Latino influence in the United States, to Spirit Song, about Native American culture in the United States. You can view Brand USA's um, giant screen movie, America's Musical Journey, a review of the cultural heritage of America seen through the lens of music. When the pandemic forced us to pause produ uh, production for these, this channel and paid media spended, we shifted to a distribution push because obviously lots of people were staying home watching streaming television. Um, and new partnerships with Samsung Plus TV in the UK and across Europe and India Go Transit in Canada and Reach TV will drive viewership across the globe to travel dream about the unique places within the United States. And so what can we expect moving forward? Next slide, please. Um, the travel trade will be even more relevant post-crisis than ever. Um, travel has been tr transformed and an expert, competent, knowledgeable travel agent can help their clients navigate this trans landscape more than ever before. For the Nordic region, we remain very positive. We hope that vaccinations in both, re both United States and the Nordics will be complete by midsummer. We anticipate that short haul travel will recover before long haul travel, but for sure that is to be expected. And we have every reason to hope that the United States will remain the Nordic Traveler's most popular long haul destination for many years. Findings from related um, travel behavior and an image sur survey from September 2020 show that almost 74% of Nordic travels have a very positive perception about the USA as a travel destination. And with that in mind, I really encourage our travel providers um, to make good use of the travel resources and tools that Brand USA offers. We have a travel trade website um, that can give inspirational itinerary planning information, updated COVID information from all sites, uh, states, um, a toolkit with high res images, video such footage, and also social media images. And also, obviously, the global marketplace, which I encourage you all and invite you all to register and use as a tool um, in this um, moment in time as we look forward to planning our travels to the United States and looking to connect with those individual destinations for the information that you need. You can download promotional material, videos, anything that is needed to plan a trip to the United States. Um, I really thank you for the opportunity to be here and um, also look forward to taking any questions that you may have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jackie. And we certainly also want USA to stay as the number one international destination for the Nordic travelers. Um, so from here, and we learned about the global marketplace, we are now going to hear about the Premier Travel Show in the USA, IPW. So over to you, Michael Martin. Thank you. Um, well, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. And I wanna thank Karen for the opportunity to speak with you all. Um, so IPW, um, for those of you who may not know, um, is the leading international inbound travel show. Um, it's over 50 years old. And this year we will be holding it in Las Vegas. Um, from September 18th to the 22nd. And I just wanted to kind of give you guys a brief 
update on what we're going to do um, and how IPW is going to look a little different this year. Um, but first, I do want to thank Brand USA for being our premier partner. And I also want to thank uh, the US embassies all over the world. Um, I partner, we partner with many of them to help us identify the buyers and media to be invited to IPW. So without your support, um, IPW would not be possible. So thank you. OK. So. One of the, the most important aspect of IPW this year is the health and safety of every delegate at our show, um, and we're committed to that. So some of the things that will look different this year, uh, we will require face masks. Um, there will be a daily health screening where we'll take temperatures. Um, we're gonna ask that everyone still keep the six feet apart from one another. Um, we're looking at technology where people can check in and pick up their badge without uh, being in front of another individual. Um, the show floor will look different Whereas whenever you see the booths right next to each other, the 10 by 10 single booths, there's going to be space between those booths as well. Um, and we're going to have the aisles where they're one way so people cannot pass each other. Um, and it's going to be a smaller show this year. Um, we usually expect uh, around 6,000 people and this year projected it could be about 2,500 to 3,000. Um, but we'll we'll see how things as we plan, you know, through the next few months. Um, but again, we are committed to your well-being and any updates on our safety practices can be found at IPW.com. OK. So again, for those of you that have attended IPW in the past, um, it's going to look a little different. Um, it's still appointment driven show. There's still going to be 44 appointments on the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to shorten the appointments this year. They're going to be 15 minutes instead of 20 minutes. Um, that will allow for more networking time. And we're also going to have three luncheons in one day. So each Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday where we host a luncheon, there's going to be three luncheons each day. Um, the luncheon hall will look different as well. For, again, for those of you that have been to IPW, you know it's a huge, enormous hall for a sit down lunch for 6,000 people. We're going to keep the same size hall, um, but because it's only going to be one third of total individuals, it could be only 1,000 people in the lunch hall at one time. We will have tables. We will have um, uh, there still will be a sponsor at each luncheon, but they will only present for 20 minutes and the lunch is going to be a grab and go. So it's not going to be a sit down lunch. It's not going to be a plated meal. Um, but if you want to stay and eat in the lunch hall, you're more than welcome to. But you can also take your lunch to go. If you're an exhibitor, exhibitor you can sit at your booth. You can go outside. So we, we really want people to feel comfortable um, and kind of plan their own experience at the show. OK. So IPW Focus, we are, and I want to make sure um, I do a call out to all of them. So we're going to do um, a co-location with Connect Tour this year. So it's Connect Tour, Connect Thrive Summit, and E-Tourism Summit are all going to be part of IPW this year um, as added value. And the IPW Focus is going to be um, specifically about educational aspect to IPW. So while the appointments are going on, we're going to have a stage out um, off the show floor where it could be a technology provider giving updates. But if someone has an open appointment, they can just go and sit and listen to the uh, educational presentation. All of that is still being planned and worked out. So the more once we get those um, confirmed, we'll share it with our delegates. OK. So right now the registration is open for US exhibitors um, for international delegates. Registration is going to open on March 30th and we want everyone to book with confidence. Um, our June 30th is the deadline for both exhibitors and international delegates. If they cancel before June 30th, they'll get 100% refund. Um, and August 6th is the deadline. If you cancel, you'll get a 50% refund. Um, 
And as of right now, it's all going to be in person at IPW. Uh, we're giving ourselves until the end of June to figure out if we're going to have a virtual option to this show. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but you know, we are we are planning this um, show, and and everything seems to be changing almost on a daily basis. You know, it depends on um, the borders being open, if people you know are still being quarantined. So. We are, you know, we are being optimistic about this, but we also know um, that changes can happen while we're planning IPW. But again, we just want to make sure that everyone feels safe um, attending IPW. Okay. So with that, um, if you guys have any questions about the show, you can visit IPW.com. Um, you can also reach out to me directly. Um, my email is mmartin at ustravel.org. And again, thank you all for, for joining us today. And thank you, Karen. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, that was really a great update from IPW. And if you are interested in participating in IPW, just shoot us an email or send it directly to Michael. And we'll be happy to assist you any way we can. So now, before we go into the last, uh, but not least, speaker, um, I would just kindly ask you if you have any questions, put them in the chat room and we'll make time for some answers at the end of the session. So with that, um, we would like to have the perspective from the largest airport in Western Denmark, Finland Airport with Jesper Kauson, the head of airline relations. So all yours. Right. Thank you, Karen. Um, yes, and this uh, morning slash afternoon, I would like to, to tell you a bit about um, how we foresee that uh, we will start traveling again. Um, during the, the last 12 months of COVID, I think I've done at least 10 different uh, forecasts and for at least 10 times I've been wrong as well. So I might not be the, the best one to take advice from on, on, on how we will actually start traveling again. But um, but actually, um, this time we have tried to take a look at um, um, what I add and how the uh, vaccine programs are looking like. So, so um, vaccines are, are getting rolled out right now uh, across the world, and and um, from our perspective, from Bill and Apple's perspective, it's good to see that at least uh, the, in Europe and in the US. Um, the, the rollout plans are, are going more or less according to, to, to schedule and uh, for the US um, things are looking quite good. Uh, the reason why we are, we are quite positive about this is that 80% of our passengers are, are going to and from Europe or the US. So 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 at least in, in this forum this is quite optimistic. On the next slide you, you will actually be able to see that in the in the US the vaccine programs are going really well at the moment. Uh, I just take the numbers today and um, and and twenty percent of the u s population have got the first vaccine and ten ten percent is is done has has got the second vaccine again and that's actually that's uh, quite a, a higher level than than in Denmark where four percent right now is is done so 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 actually this is this is quite good news um in in terms of of getting uh, travel up and running in in Europe and especially to the u s again. Looking at uh, the IATA forecast for 2021, um, IATA actually expect that during 2021 we'll reach roughly index 50 compared to the um, uh, 2019 level. However, if we do see mutations, and we probably will do, and we already are doing this, um, and delays to vaccine programs, they, they also made a, a, um, a alternative forecast, and that's the dotted line in, in this graph. And um, in this scenario, we will only reach index uh, roughly 40 for 2021. But it, it, at least um, it seems that air travel will start to pick up during um, the third quarter of, of 2021. So how will uh, people then return to the aircraft? Um, and we've actually asked that and we, we're continuing to, to ask the, the West Danish population this question. And uh, our most recent study shows that actually almost 70% will return to the aircraft and return to air travel in the same extent to how they were traveling before. So 70% of the market will be pretty much the same. 
of course, that leaves uh, then 22% uh, of the market which will travel less and uh, a small percentage of the market who will actually, well, they say they'll start to travel more. There's probably a backlog of traveling and vacations to, to, to take for these guys. But actually, I think there's reason to be optimistic that 70% or 68% is returning to the aircraft in the same extent as before. On the next slide, um, you we have also um, been quite curious about how will people travel uh, within Europe as well as overseas, and also in this forum, this 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 will be uh, quite interesting. Um, on average, uh, people in Western might take one point thirty four um, trips a year, while they did in in, in twenty nineteen, and uh, in the, the in the coming twelve months after the world will start uh, traveling again. Uh, this level will drop to roughly one uh, trip. But actually, it seems, at least when we ask people, that they're more prepared to travel outside of Europe than inside of Europe. At least that's where we see the, the least um, decrease in, 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 the, uh, in the travel activity. So actually, uh, going outside of Europe, for instance, to the US, um, air travel will only drop 16% as opposed to 25% within Europe. Now, this has also to do with the fact that we, we see um, a larger decline in business travel as opposed to consumer uh, or private travel. Actually, um, business travel is expected to, to drop 30% um, and many of these travel uh, trips will have been within Europe. On the next slide, um, yes, so when, when, when will people then start to travel again. And actually, um, it, it, they well, when we ask them at least, uh, roughly uh, one third of the, uh, of the travelers will start to travel right away. So once we get the green lights um, popping up in Southern Europe soon or to the US, maybe, maybe later on this year, people will start to travel again. Um, another roughly uh, one third of the market or 25 percent of the market will wait a couple of months, uh, whilst the remaining will will uh, come along uh, within a, a year or so. Seven percent will not start to travel again, they tell us, but uh, again, it's a small percentage. And then lastly, on the last slide, um, we have also been quite curious as to know how will people uh, feel safe once they start to travel? And um, and uh, quite interesting, it seems that um, it's very, very important that airports and airlines seems to very, be very um, um, accountable to, to, to the procedures that they, they, they put in place to keep people safe. So for instance, lots of spacing, uh, easy to uh, disinfect your hands, um, and facilities like that will be very, very important. Um, and this is, of course, as an industry, things that we are looking close uh, into and which we have already um, made sure of um, uh, is, is actually um, what passengers will experience uh, once they get through the, um, the airport and into the, the aircraft. So uh, I had a... Karen told me that I could only uh, speed talk until um, uh, ten two, so I, I better start now so we can get back to the Q and A. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, but I think you did pretty well. Um, I think you all did. So thank you everyone for being our in our panel today. Uh, we will open up for questions, and I see that there are already a few there, and there's one Jackie, and that's for you. Um, there's a question when there will be a Danish slash Nordic um, indicator dashboard available from Brand USA. Ah, that's a very good question. Actually, that was the question that I asked our research team when I was preparing this. And I said, is there a way that we can do one for the Nordics? And um, we're certainly looking into that. Actually, it, it's um, I'm hoping to get it up in the next month or so. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then Christina from the uh, Councillor Service, I see there's a few questions for you, but I think you should actually respond to them here live because it's pretty good questions. Sure, I'd be happy to. So for, for those who are, aren't able to see the chat screen, uh, one of the questions was, um, 
Are the travel restrictions related to the situation in the U.S. or the situation in Schengen? Could there be a scenario where enough people in the U.S. have been vaccinated and the border opens for tourism? Um, in this situation, the U.S. Uh, people would be protected. So my understanding from the um, from the decision makers at the Washington level are that the situation is being reviewed holistically. Um, they're looking at the COVID situation both in the United States as well as the um, the regions where the proclamation impact, the 32 countries impacted by a by the proclamation, and that uh, yeah, I think it's absolutely possible that if um, if the U.S. transmission rates continue to go down and the situation really improves. Um, would the restrictions be lifted? And yes, absolutely. I think that's possible. And I, yep. So that's that one. Thank you so much. I think there was and, another one for you, Christina. Yep. Yeah, it said the second question was, I know nothing can be confirmed at this moment, but do you think the U.S. will require travelers to have a vaccine or only a negative PCR test once once we're able to travel again? And do you think the same restrictions would apply to children as to adults? Um, yeah, and that's a very good question. We've actually at the embassy have received a lot of questions and confusion. People thinking that if they have a vaccine, so some people concerned, is the US government going to make me get a vaccine? I don't want a vaccine. Or also questions on the other flip side is I have a vaccine. I'm not subject to the travel restrictions anymore, correct? So um, I have seen nothing come from the administration or the CDC. Uh, there's been no decisions um, that I know of that a vaccine would be required for travel to the US for American citizens and or foreign citizens seeking entry. Um, could that change in the future? Possible, but um, if that were to happen, the CDC, I know the CDC and the government would would make that, uh, advertise that broadly. But for now, the only um, requirement in place is the negative COVID test, and that is for ages two and above. Thank you so much, Christina, for responding to those two questions. Um, I also have one, and that's for you, Jesper. Uh, and I think that's what we're all looking, looking to, waiting to see is, do you have any indicators that there might be increased services to outside our capital airports in the Nordics? Uh, do you receive a lot of requests for new routes to US? Or what is your indicator? Well, well, absolutely, but uh, uh, that's more a, a pre-COVID COVID situation. I think uh, currently airlines are looking more into developing routes into the Europe, uh, into Europe, um, and and then moving on. Um, uh, maybe in a few years' time, we will see it's a bit different. Uh, the major airlines, the hub airlines, have uh, taken out a lot of large aircraft from their hubs, um, meaning that they 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 have only smaller aircraft to fill in the in, in, in between the, the large European cities and the US, meaning that actually the, the new technology aircraft like the uh, Airbus 321 and uh, Neo and 737 uh, Max is actually you know uh, on the doorstep to getting into the um, European um, uh, regional airports. So Hopefully, within a few years, we will actually start to see um, routes as well developed from the regional airports into the US. Great. We certainly hope so. We can't wait for that. Um, but also, I have a question for you, Michael, and that is, uh, of course, about IPW. So, if a buyer or tour operator travel agent over here in um, the Nordic sign up and what do, it's going to, the show is going to be cancelled what will happen then will you fully refund or will you transfer to next year no we we have already decided if we cancel the show everyone will get a full refund um you know last year it it was new to everybody and and you know we when we finally decided to cancel the show we reached out and said do you want to roll it over to the next year and you know we refunded and and some did roll over, a couple hundred did roll over from last year. But um, just to be clear, if we cancel a show, everyone will get 100% full refund. Um, and I also forgot to mention for the buyers, their registration this year is 250 US dollars. Um, it has never been that low in the 50 plus year history of IPW. 
Um, obviously, we're doing it to encourage participation. Um, but again, to answer the question, 100% refund if we cancel the show. Perfect. Thank you. Then over to you, Jackie, about the Brand USA Travel Week in Europe in four. Yes. If you can just uh, talk just one or two minutes about that. The US Travel Week, Brand USA Travel Week, is actually the week before we have our USA Travel Show here in Copenhagen. So, Jackie, over to you. Yes, it will be a in-person event in London at the same venue as last time. Um, it, last time it took place in person, which was at County Hall in 2019. The dates are October um, October 25th to 28th, and we are in the process of putting that together right now. But it will be a bio-hosted um, program as um, 2019 um, with you know, again, we're, we are like IPW and US Travel probably planning for a more scaled down version um, because as many of you know, our individual destinations and partners just have some real budget restrictions as we all do, um, or restrictions, but budget challenges. Um, but we do intend to hold an in-person event at the end of October in London. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, and then I see Christina, I think there's another question for you coming up. And the question is, could there be different rules for different states, like on a set of rules for Maine, another for Alaska and so on? And or will it always be national rules? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say, um, so in terms of international travel to the United States, I, that would always be the federal government level rule. So these proclamations, for instance, that are in place now. Um, and then in terms of state by state rules, though there already are different rules state by state. There are different states have different quarantine rules. Um, some states have, uh, yeah, different, um, different requirements for mask wearing. So it does vary from state to state once you are already within the United States, and I think domestic travel, but in terms of international travel, I think that will always come from the federal government level because it is the federal government that is working at the ports of entries between the Department of Homeland Security, NTSA, and CBP. Good question. Okay. Thank you so much, Christina. And with that, that was the last question. We are right on 3 p.m. Danish time. Um, I want to thank all our speakers again for this very insightful information that you have shared with us today. We are going to send out the survey. We're going to send out the link to this um, webinar. And we are also going to make sure that you have all the contact details from uh, for the speakers so you can contact them directly as well. So with that said, I wish you all a continued nice Monday out there and um, all the best to the global marketplace, Jackie. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you.